Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 195 we'll take a look at something called sacrificial architecture. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday on my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. I was going back and forth texting with a friend and he turned me on to this particular article uh, by Oscar uh, Dudas called Removi Removability Over Maintainability. And I found this article very interesting. Basically, Oscar said two things in this article that really resonated with me. First, um, he said, I think we should not, or I think we should optimize not for maintainability, but removability. If our system is built in a way that we can relatively easy to remove pieces from it, then we can drop bad ideas and move with the new ones. And also, he goes on to say, we're making the most significant decisions when we're dumbest. In other words, he says, we don't know our domain and we don't know the tech stack, yet we're trying to guess the best option and present it as wise architecture decisions. Uh, Neil Ford and I talk about this quite a bit in, well, as a matter of fact, in all of our books, uh, but of late, we've been referring to this really in the spirit of iterative architecture. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a quote from our book because this whole topic of iterative architecture and what Oscar is saying in this particular quote here really deserves an entire video. <laughs> uh, but iterative architecture and what Oscar is really driving at is this, and this is a direct quote from our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, that developers should never take components designed by architects as the last word. Rather, the initial design should be viewed as a first draft, where implementation will reveal more details and refinements. Uh, yet another way of essentially saying the same thing Oscar was saying in his article here. However, let's take a look at this first quote on the left-hand side. I think that we should optimize not for maintainability, but removability. I, I was going back and forth with my friend and I said, oh, I said, you should see my video on sacrificial architecture because that's what really that's all about. And so he said, okay, and said, which video? And I realized after 194 lessons, I actually never talked about sacrificial architecture. <laughs> and that's the backstory to this particular video. So what Oscar was really talking about in his article is what Martin Fowler wrote about back in October of 2014. It was quite a long time ago. Uh, as a matter of fact, at the recording of this video almost 20 years ago. And what Martin Fowler was really talking about in his article about sacrificial architecture was this ability, the same thing we do with source code, of basically destroying an architecture, removing it completely, sacrificing it, and rebuilding from the ground up. Now, I would encourage you to read this article because it's extremely good, and even though it was written almost 10 years ago, it's extremely relevant today. And as a matter of fact, I pulled off two different aspects of sacrificial architecture from Martin's article. And that's what I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, examples of what sacrificial architecture means. Um, things I term full replacement, which Martin Fowler talks about in his article, um, but also modular replacement as well. The whole aspect of modularity within architecture. And let me show you some examples of this sacrificial architecture uh, in play. Let's take a look at the full replacement piece that Martin Fowler talks about in his article first. Way back, a couple of decades ago, I was involved in a startup, and that startup happened to put together a architecture very quickly to get this out the door as cheaply as possible with a monolithic, mon monolithic uh, solution uh, using uh, Ruby on Rails. 
And this worked very well. It was fast to put together um, and it worked. Uh, the company started growing and after a couple of years, they needed to start integrating with all sorts of other kinds of third party services and software, such as Oracle Financials and some reporting. And Ruby on Rails was not the right architecture for this. So in the spirit of sacrificial architecture, we completely sacrificed that architecture and in its place rewrote that system in Java uh, using a modular monolith. This worked very well for about another five years until the company grew to the point where this architecture was no longer suitable. And as a matter of fact, we sacrificed it and ended up with a new architecture, service-based architecture, with a host of platforms and languages, including Java, Node.js, and also some .NET with some C-sharp. And the point is that sacrificial architecture was basically realizing at certain transition points that the architecture that we had previously is no longer supporting the needs of the business. And rather than trying to bolt this on like a stovepipe stovepipe architecture, and as a matter of fact, that is a prior lesson. So if you search for stovepipe architecture anti-pattern, uh, you'll see a lesson on that. Uh, but instead of bolting things on and having it look like a Frankenstein architecture, rather we just sacrifice it. And that's what Martin was talking about in his article. Yet there's another aspect which I get very excited about when we start talking about architecture, and that's all about modular replacement. And I want to show you three examples with three different architecture styles. I want to show you modular replacement capabilities, sacrificial architecture with the microkernel architectural style, the layered, yes, believe it or not, and also microservices. And so let's take a look at each of these and see this modular replacement. Sacrificial architecture does not always mean we have to sacrifice the entire architecture, but maybe just pieces of it. For example, if we have a microkernel architecture and we want to replace a portion of that, we can completely sacrifice one plugin and add another without impacting the rest of that architecture. As a matter of fact, sometimes sacrificing an architecture or parts of it is not necessarily replacing it, but rather removing it. <laughs> and the microkernel architecture is a great example of this ability or capability within the architecture to support this level of modularity and sacrificial architecture. As a matter of fact, let's go to our traditional layered architecture where we have a presentation layer, business layer, service layer, all the way down to the database. We can still demonstrate sacrificial architecture with this kind of architecture style, depending on the kind of change. This is a technically partitioned architecture. And as such, if our change is to, for example, completely replace the user interface, but keep everything else the same, this is a great architecture to do that because we can completely sacrifice our presentation layer and put in a new presentation layer different technology and framework without impacting any of the other layers in the architecture. Perhaps one of the, mm, uh, I was going to say most classic, but most popular uh, demonstrations of modular replacement and sacrificial architecture is microservices. Because of the shape of this architecture, uh, separately deployed services single purpose with each owning their own data, because of this level of modularity, almost at a function level, we can start now sacrificing different portions of this architecture, replacing services with others fairly easily without impacting other aspects of that architecture. And so this is yet another example on one of the other extreme ends of an architecture style where we can apply sacrificial architecture without having to remove, or I uh, should say, sacrifice the entire architectural system. 
So here's two sources, uh, the Removability Over Maintainability article by Oscar and also uh, Martin Fowler's art article on sacrificial architecture, uh, a concept that is highly relevant still today. So thank you both Oscar and Martin for these wonderful sources uh, to really understand how to change architecture and also how to sacrifice portions of the architecture. So this has been Lesson 195, Sacrificial Architecture. Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.